Um, so for lesson two, we talked about just the different building blocks of geometry that you guys are going to need. We talked about how to name a point line in a plane. We talked about um, lines, segments, rays, and the definition of a postulate, which is um, a statement that we just assume is fact. Today, we're going to actually be talking, um, and then we talked about four different postulates. Today, we're going to add some postulates. I'm going to give you um, several postulates that have special names, so those are the ones that I expect you to know the names of, but a lot of them are still very um, intuitive, so they should just make sense with uh, what they are saying. And then we're going to be um, working with some segments and some um, postulates in practice. So let's get our definitions out of the way. First definition is distance. So I will be asking you to measure distance of segments. Um, a distance is the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates of two points. Ooh, that was not pretty. Sorry. It's hard. Um, so, for example, if I give you a line that looks like this, and it has points A and B, and when I say coordinates, um, I mean the numbers that are associated with these points, okay? So, um, and it's in your notes too, but if we have points A and B, remember points are, are um, noted by capital letters, we use lowercase a and b to represent the coordinates or the numbers of the, those points. And to find the distance between the two points, we take the absolute value of the difference. So segment AB is equal to lowercase a minus lowercase b, absolute value. So the distance between the two points is the difference between the numbers associated with the coordinates, but distance is always positive, so we take the absolute value. And in practice, you will have numbers attached with those. Okay, midpoint. Midpoint is something that's going to keep coming up. And it is exactly what the um, name says. It is a point. It's the middle of a segment. So it is a point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. So in my example, I have a segment AC. I'm going to call B the midpoint. Um, I know that B is the midpoint because I can put a notation here. Have you guys seen this before, this kind of notation? Yes, no? Okay. In geometry, if um, with segment lengths, if you have two segments that have the same marking on the segment, it means they are congruent or the same length. So the fact that AB has one um, tick mark or marking on it, anything, other segments that also have one marking mean that they are congruent to AB. So um, BC is congruent to AB because they both have one marking. Does that make sense? Okay. And we would call B the midpoint. 
We have a similar marking for angles uh, when we get to angle measurements. <clears throat> Um, last one is a segment bisector. A segment bisector is a point, line, ray, or segment that intersects a segment at its midpoint. So, for example, in our same segment as above, if we have a C and the midpoint is B, we know B is the midpoint because there's markings that show the two opposite segments are equal. You can never just assume that B is the midpoint because it looks like it's in the middle. There has to be the markings. And then let's say a line runs through point B. Let's call it line L. So we would say that line L is a segment bisector, meaning it cuts, it's a cursive L, meaning that it cuts um, the segment into two pieces. So it goes through the midpoint. Okay, so um, for 7.3, we're going to be talking about segments, how to measure them, and manipulating them a little bit using the definitions that I just gave you. So our fifth postulate, um, and I think we end up having like, I don't know, 12 postulates total. What does it come out to? Oh, this just Nine. So we have nine postulates, and we've already, we're already on five. So we're already halfway through all the postulates for this unit. So the fifth postulate is called the ruler postulate, and it was a lot of writing again, so I typed it out for you. So let's read it together. Every point on a line can be paired with a real number. This makes a one-to-one -one correspondence between the points on the line and the real numbers. The real number that corresponds to a point is called the coordinate of a point. I would underline that. So the real number that corresponds to a point is called the coordinate of a point. Um, the ruler postulate allows you to measure lengths of segments. So there's a little picture here for you guys of a ruler. Basically what it's saying is if I have a number line, A and B are the names of my points, but the number beneath them is the coordinate of the point. Okay, so the number that's associated with it. So we're going to just practice by measuring lengths to start. I'm going to do the first one with you, and then I'm sure you guys can handle it on your own. So for number one, I want um, to find the length of ST, so this length right here. So um, I already told you to find the distance between two points. We're going to take the absolute value of the coordinates. So ST, and I want to um, point out to you guys also, when we are talking about measure, so when you are associating a length or a number with um, a segment, we do not put the segment um, symbol above it, okay? So when we're talking about the length between the two points, the distance, we just put the two points, ST. We don't have to put the segment um, above it. Okay, so the segment notation is for when there are no numbers attached to it. So that in theory, we know we're talking about a segment. If I'm attaching numbers to it, we take that off because now we're just talking about distance. Okay, and we'll do the same thing with angles when we get there. So um, ST is equal to the absolute value of the coordinate of S, which in this case is negative 4. So the absolute value of negative 4 minus the coordinate of t, which is 8. So that's the absolute value of negative 12. 
And what's the absolute value of negative 12, guys? 12. Positive 12. So we say ST equals 12. I do want you to show your work. No, you cannot just count the measures. I know. You can use it to check your answer, but I want you to show your work. You can't so, count Oh, so wait, what I want you guys to do is two and three for me really quick. Mm -hmm. do we have to... Okay, AJ, what did you get for the length of UV? Four. Okay, guys, thumbs up, thumbs down. I agree, I disagree. Okay, good. And Christian, what did you get for um, the length of SV? 18. SV, 18. Thumbs up, I agree. Thumbs down, I disagree. Okay, good. Any questions so far, guys? This shouldn't be too, too, too bad. Okay, so let's talk about the next part. Oh. Okay, so postulate six, and this is one that you definitely need to know, and you definitely need to know the name of. So I would put a star next to it. It is the segment addition postulate. Here's what the segment addition, addition postulate says. If three points A, B, and C are collinear and B is between A and C, and then I want you to underline this, then A, B plus B, C equals A, C. That should make sense. If I have A, B and I add it to B, C, I should get the full length of A, C. Okay? So that's the segment addition postulate. You do need to know the name and what it says. Let's use it for number four. So number four, if EG equals 59, so that whole thing, and I'm going to write it in there, equals 59, what are EF and FG? So the first thing we have to do is figure out what X is. So I'm going to take segment EF, which is 8x minus 14, and add it to segment FG, which is 4x plus 1. And it should equal 59. Okay, so we're going to combine like terms. 8x plus 4x gives me 12x. Negative 14 plus 1 gives me negative 13. All of that should equal 59. Now we're in a two-step equation, which is something we did like the first week of school. Add 13 to both sides. So we get 12x equals 72. Divide both sides by 12. And I end up with x equals 6. Okay, I'm done, right? No. Did I answer the question? No. No, I want, the question was, what are E, F, and F, G? So we have to plug x back in. So let's do EF. Um, let me draw a line. EF equals 8x minus 14. So 8 times 6 minus 14. Eight times six is forty-eight minus fourteen, which is twenty-four. So EF is twenty-four. And I'm going to box that. That'd be 34. 34. Oh, my goodness gracious. Thank you. I thought I heard somebody say 24, so I just went with it. FG is 4X plus 1. So 4 times 6 plus 1. 4 times 6 is 24. Plus 1 is 25. So let's see, how would I set it up? I have JL is equal to 120. What did you do first? Rose, what did you do first? Um, I did 4x plus, like, plus 
4x plus 6 plus 7x plus 15 equals 120. Good. Next step. Who can give me the next step? Karina, what's my next step? Combine like terms. So when you combine like terms, what did you get? Plus 21 equals 120. Good. Okay, next step. What would we do after that, Dennis? What's your next step? Um, I would just subtract the inverse and the inverse. Mm-hmm. So what'd you get, Dennis? 11x equals 99. Okay. And then last step is solve for x. So, Kiki, what'd you get for x? Nine. Are we done? No. no. We have to plug it all back in. So um, you should plug nine in for x to find jk and kl. What'd you get for jk, David? Forty-two. Forty-two. Do you guys agree or disagree? Agree. Okay. And what did you get for kl, Mackenzie? Seventy-eight. Agree or disagree? Okay. Good. Okay. Questions or concerns? All right, so important thing that I want you guys to pay attention to. I will tell you right now, there is a question just like this on your test. It is a multiple choice question. Do you know what one of the distractors might be? Swapping them or not doing the work all the way. So if number five was a multiple choice question, three of your answer choices are going to be nine, 42, 78, and then probably like 100, you know, like something random. These three are all parts of the process for solving the problem. Do you know how many of you are probably going to choose number nine? Or choose nine as your answer? I hope none of you do. Okay, I'm telling you right now, read the question. Okay? Sometimes I might ask you to solve for X. Sometimes I'm going to ask you to solve all the way, okay? But I guarantee all three of those answer choices will be there. So be careful. Okay, so congruent segments. When numerical expressions have the same value. We say they are equal. And then I put the equal sign there for you. Okay, so this is similar to what I was just telling you about, about how we don't put the segment um, above when we're talking, we're dealing with numbers. So when the numerical expressions have the same value, we say they are equal. So previously, um, if I was working with the angle measures, we're talking about equality. So we use the equal sign. If two segments have the same length, So we're talking non-numerical here. Then the segments are congruent. And then I put the symbol for congruent there for you also. Okay? You guys should have seen this in the past, right? Mm -hmm. The equal with the little squiggly above it. Okay, so here are some statements we can say based off of that. If AB is equal to CD... We can also say that segment AB is congruent to segment CD, okay? Um, and then we can go the opposite way as well. So if um, segment AB is congruent to segment CD, we know that the value of AB is equal to the value of CD, okay? So we can go back and forth. So... Um, Remember, this symbol means that they are congruent, um, and then here we know they are equal because they're both one inch, okay? So we can go both ways on here. Um, so then let's talk about a bisector. I want to point out to you guys, notice how on A, B, and B, C, they both have two marks. So are they still congruent? Yes, okay? So if one mark has already been used, then we move on to two marks and then three marks. As long as they have the same amount, they are congruent, okay? So you're not using one every single time, okay? Um, and then we already wrote the definition of this, but it's a visual example for you as well. 
Um, and then we're going to use this uh, and the definition of midpoint to solve the next uh, couple questions. So, um, I'm giving you a segment. And I tell you that um, Q is the midpoint of PR. So we can put the little marks there. I want to know what is PQ, RQ, and PR. If I know that Q is the midpoint, what can I do with the two values that are given? If they're congruent, what else did the previous little uh, box tell us? They are also equal. So we can take PQ and set it equal to QR. So 6x minus 7 equals 5x plus 1. Let's solve for x. Subtract 5x. And we get x minus 7 equals 1. Add 7. And I get x equals 8. Am I done? No. Um, the <coughs> excuse me, wanted us to solve for PQ. So PQ equals 6x, so 6 times 8 minus 7. Um, 6 times 8 is 48. Minus 7 gives me 41. Okay, so PQ is 41. If I were to plug X back into QR, 5X plus 1, what would I get? 41. Why can I say that? Even though I didn't do it, Rose. Mm -hmm. PQ and QR are equal, so they are the same. So what does that mean PR equals? 82. So you only have to do the work for one of them. And then not square it. Or double it. Double it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not square it. Okay, so guys, try number seven for me. Melody, what did you do first on number seven? X A equals A Y. Okay, and then what values would I plug in, Rebecca? You're one step ahead of me. Hold on. What would be the next thing? What was your expression? Your equation? So right now we only have X A equals A Y. So we have no numbers plugged in. So what do you get? Okay, so 3x equals? Good. And then what was your first step? Uh, I would add the like terms. Add the like terms. So did you subtract 3x or did you subtract 5x from both sides? I subtracted 3x. Okay, so she did minus 3x. And then I added 6. And then added 6. Okay, so that gives us 8x minus 6. Add 6. So we get x, 6 equals 8x. Is that what you got? Nope, no, 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 no. It should not be what you got. What did you actually get? 2x, yeah. I made a mistake. Divide by 2. So she got x equals 3. Is there a different way you could have done this? Yes. Who did something different? Kiki, what did you do? Oh, I subtracted 5x from both sides. Okay, so see... She subtracted 5x and got negative 2x equals negative 6. And then do you still get x equals 3? Yes, okay? Either way, does not matter, okay? Um, when you plug 3 back in, let's do xa. Isabella, what did you do? Okay, and got 9. So xa equals 9. So, Malika, what did you get for AY? Nine. Nine. And Megan, what did you get for XY? 18. 18. Thumbs up if you agree. Good. Okay. That's it.